in this algorithm that we have is not keeping track of where it's already been. You see that, right? So what we need to do is we need to keep track of where we already been so that we don't go there again. Now, I will tell you that in computer science, there are two big classes of maze solving. One that uses recursion. And if we have time at the end of the year, I'll show you how to do that. But today, instead of using recursion, which uses a program stack, we're gonna use a manual stack. And we're gonna use the stack that you learned uh, earlier it, it, last week, the, the classic stack that's in the Java library to keep track of where the mouse is and where it's been so that we don't end up in this infinite loop situation, keep going round and round. The stack gives us certain advantages over the hash map. In particular, when we find the cheese, the stack will contain the actual path that we use to get to the cheese. And that will allow us to print our solution a record of order that we want the stack to keep an order of which, which nodes we visited in what order. So in order to set this uh, uh, example with the stack, we're not gonna use this left wall algorithm anymore. We're gonna use a different algorithm. And I'm gonna first of all show you some starter code that you can use to load up on your IntelliJ. So uh, open up an IntelliJ project, and call it uh, Rat in a Maze project or something like that. And this will be the last stack project we have. So I want you to create an IntelliJ project called Rat in a Maze project. And I'm gonna give you some starter code. I'm gonna show you the starter code now for your project. To find the starter code, you can go over to the Google Classroom and go to uh, uh, data structures here and go to the classwork section. And you'll see that there's this thing called a stack lab rat in a maze. We just finished this Drew rat in a maze, by the way. Let's go over to stack lab rat in a maze. And you can see here that there's a link to some instructions. Let's go over there. And here is the starter code for your project. Starter code for your project is here and the parts that you have to do are listed in red, listed in red. I want to show you basically what a maze looks like. It looks like this. Let me just blow this up for you to make it much easier to see. Here is what a starter maze looks like. The ones represent the locations where the mouse is allowed to travel, and the zeros represent the dark squares where the mouse cannot go. For the mazes in this project, the mouse always starts on the top left of the maze and always the cheese is located on the bottom right of the maze. That's just a simplification we've added to keep the project a little bit easier. Now, one of the nice things about this binary representation of the maze is just by looking at it, you can see what the right answer should be. So you can see the mouse is gonna start here and it wants to end here. So it's just gonna follow this path right here like that you see that right so it goes this way then it goes down then it makes a left turn uh, it's it, it, left turn according to it you know by its uh coordinates it's a left turn and then it goes here like that now some mazes will be unsolvable and you need to figure out what those are also okay so it's don't think that every maze is going to have a solution because it's not some will be unsolvable so the question is how are we gonna navigate this maze? And here's what we're going to do. We're gonna create a rat object or a rat class. Let's do that right now. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a rat class. And the rat class is going to have information that describes where the rat is. It's gonna need state information and it needs to keep track of two things. The first thing it needs is the X, Y coordinates of where it is, or in this case, row column right row column it needs to keep track of and the other thing it needs to keep track of is what direction is it facing because we need to know when all the directions have been exhausted for our project we are arbitrarily going to use these as our direction coordinates if you want to make the project slightly more elegant you can replace these coordinates by using something else we learned earlier in the year enum you can use an enum and replace the zero with north and east and south and west, you could do that. 
But I'm not going to add that complication here. If you just want to use the integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, that's okay with me. That, those will be the direction coordinates. The general idea for solving this maze goes like this. We start the rat here, and we try to go up. If up is available, we go up. Is, if we're right here, can we go in the upward direction? No, because we're right, already in the first row here. If we can't go up, the next thing we try to do is we try to go in the next direction, which is this way over here. So we try to go to the right. Can we go to the right in this particular case? We can. If this was blocked, then we would try to go forward. If that's blocked, then, sorry, forward in this case is down direction. And if that's blocked, then we would try to go to the left. You got the idea? Once we've exhausted all the directions, if we can't go anywhere, that means that we're at a dead end. So then we need to remove ourselves from the stack and backtrack to the previous location that we were at when we started searching. We're going to use a technique called depth first search. That means if it's possible to go, you're going to go. And only when you get caught in a dead end will you back off and try the next direction. That's the idea. So once again, we're going to build a rat class. And the rat class needs to keep track of the row column coordinates and also the direction. Private int uh, row, private int column, and private int direction, like that. Now, normally we usually use private variables and then we use getters and setters. I'm going to show you another way today to access to create access modifiers that are much more friendly. And what we, we're going to do is we haven't something we haven't done before is in order to keep other classes from accessing our rat class and accidentally changing the data, we can put private modifiers here, but we can also do something else. We can actually put one class inside the other, put one class inside the other, and that way the maze will be the only one that has access to the rat class. And by doing that, we can make this manipulation of the rat much easier because then we will not need to put these private modifiers here and we'll be able to access this information directly, which will greatly reduce the amount of code that we have to write. We're not going to extend from it. We're going to contain the rat class. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and so this is going to be the basics of it. And we're also going to need a two string here to print the rat. I'll let you work on that yourself. And I don't think you need anything else, but I think that might be, I think that might be uh, it, it right there. Okay. So you notice that this thing uses a stack to help solve the problem. It uses the stack in the Java library. And I've called my class rat maze with stack. You can call it whatever you like. It's not shown here, but you're going to put your rat class inside this class. That will allow it to basically not be usable or touchable by anyone else. You don't have to worry about its data being touched accidentally. Here is the maze that's going to be passed in the constructor. And here is, oh, this looks like it only works for square. Uh, now, this is not what we're going to use. This is not right. Uh, this should contain rats. And here, I'll talk about this visited matrix in a second. That's important. So you can see this is the constructor. And when the constructor for the maze is created, the, the maze itself is given to the constructor. And that's loaded up. And then we figure out how big the, uh, the matrix is. This we use later on in our calculations. And then here, you have to initialize all the, the matrices. OK, so you have to do that in the constructor. Here, when you find the solution, you have to print it. All you have to do is keep popping the stack and printing the rats that are in the stack. The stack should automatically have the solution that you need once you find the solution. Now, this is valid is important. This should say uh, int r, sorry, int r, int c, something like that, row and column. And what you're going to do is this this method is going to be a utility method that you use to figure out if a given row and column actually fits in this maze or not. So let me give you an example. Let's look at this maze right here. So if I set the row to minus three, minus three and the column to two, 
are those valid coordinates in this in this matrix? No. So is valid would return false in this case. You get the idea? Now here, if I go row equals four, column equals two, is that valid? It is not. Row. This is row zero, row one, row two, row three. So you can see here the row is no good. So once again, is valid would return false. You get the idea? So that's just a useful little thing to tell you where the bounds of your matrix are. And that's a utility function that you'll need to write. This is the test code. Right now, you just get it to work with this maze, but Georgi is working hard on building different, more difficult mazes for you to test. You're gonna have to have one set of code that works with all the mazes. So now this is how you invoke the maze. You create a maze, you pass it, you pass it the matrix, and then you call the solve method on the maze. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about this visited matrix, which is the, the visited matrix basically keeps track of what nodes in the matrix you've already visited. A much simpler way to think about that is if the node is already in the stack right now, the visited matrix will have a true in the, in the coordinates for, for that matrix. So this visited matrix is of the exact same size as the original maze. The difference is that instead of having ones and zeros, it has trues and falses inside of it. And the true basically means you've already been there. And the idea here is if you've been there, you don't want to go there again. You can see that the code here, the algorithm tells you to avoid squares that you've already visited. Now, Occasionally, what will happen is you'll be running the algorithm and you get to a square where you've exhausted all four directions and you realize that this is not a path to the cheese. When that happens, you pop it off the stack. And when you pop it off the stack, you also have to go back to the visited matrix and make that false again because you may need to uh, uh, visit that again at some point. Okay. So you have to figure out. As stuff is being removed from the stack, you need to go back and modify the visited matrix. So the idea for the algorithm is generally this. You're going to start with the mouse here, and you're going to try every direction to see if you can go. And if you can go in that direction, you're going to push the current rat, in other words, the state of the, the row, the column, and the direction into the stack, and then go to the next location, and then start the search from there again. So what you're doing is as the mouse is going deeper and deeper into the maze, the stack is growing, it's growing. And every time you get to a spot like over here, let's say you get to here and you realize, hey, I'm at a dead end. You gotta pop that rat off the stack now. And so what's gonna happen is you're gonna systematically check every single square of this matrix until one of two things happens. You either discover you can't get to the cheese or you actually find the cheese. Finding the cheese means getting to the last row, last column in your square matrix. What do you think will be the end condition that tells you that you could not get to the cheese? If the stack is all empty and there's nowhere else to go, that means that you run out of possibilities. So now I will tell you that if you look hard enough, you will find the solution to this and every other computer science problem ever created on the internet. Please do not cheat yourself of the opportunity to learn this algorithm from the ground up. It will teach you how to think. It will teach you how to do a brute force search. There's a lot of value to learning this algorithm. It's not that hard. Okay, try to go through this. Look, you start with the rat. You look, you look up. Can I go up? No. Can I go to the left? Uh, sorry, can I go to the right? I can. So you push the current rat onto the stack and you move to the right. Then you, you're over here now. Say, can I go up? No. Can I go to the right? Yes. So you come over here now. Push that onto the stack. You're over here. Can I go up? No. Can I go to the right? Yes. Over here. Can I go up? No. Can I go uh, to the right? No. Can I go down? No. Because there's a zero here. So now I got to pop that off the stack. And now I'm going to continue with my search. You, you, want to, you want to use these direction vectors when you, when you, cycle through all the directions and you're back to zero, that means you're at a dead end. 
You tried everything. You couldn't get there. You need to pop yourself up off the stack. Okay. And to avoid this loop issue, to avoid this loop issue, you need to keep track of which squares you've already visited on the current search so that when you get to the to, to this, when you get over here and you come around and you're like, oh, I've been here before already, then you need to know you need to know that you don't need, you can't go there again. Yes, sir. You create new rats and put them on the stack. That's right. So what what you don't go to a certain point, sir. You you when the current position is exhausted. You just ex you just take the current rat off the stack and go to the previous rat that was on the stack, and you continue from there. You need to increment that rat's direction by one. Okay. You see the idea? Yeah. That keeps the the game progressing. Otherwise, you'll do the exact same thing okay. again if you don't do that. So when you print the stack, you're going to print all the rats in the stack. Yeah. Each rat is going to have uh, two things in it. It's going to have the x y coordinates, a row column. And also the direction. You're not going to need the direction when you print the solution. No, sir. You want to take out the direction stuff and only print the XYs.